to see when that angel Gabriel, um, 26th, the first chapter of Luke, was sent from God to a town, just called Nazareth. No, Bethlehem, I think. Oh. Town of Galilee named Nazareth, yeah. And um, can you just think this angel, which is sort of, he seems like one of the head angels, Gabriel, was sent down to earth. Mm -hmm. Sent by God. You know, I've been to a place in, um, in France called Mount Saint Michel. It's on the east coast, west coast of France. In um, Brittany or Normandy, they fight over who's got the mount. Sometimes it belongs to Normandy and sometimes it belongs to Brittany because the river keeps changing the course. <laughs> and so <laughs> uh, that's a bit of a joke in France. But on the top of that mount, <laughs> uh, that mount which is out in the ocean on an island, if you've ever seen photos of Mount St. Michel, there's a monastery right up the top and on top of that monastery is a golden statue to the angel Michael because it is claimed that he did a visitation there many, many years ago. Now, whether it's true or not, it doesn't matter. So, um, uh, some things are meaningful to some <coughs> cultures, and this is a meaningful thing for Mary, isn't it? Gabriel. It makes ladies, makes ladies, I've always said this, but a joke, you know, we get a visitation from the angel Gabriel, and he has the same message. <laughs> Um, he, was, he said to her, you're going to get pregnant, that's what he said. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we get a different angel when we come to us then, we mm -hmm. But when she saw him, she was greatly troubled. Mm -hmm. But he said, you're highly favoured, and the Lord is with you. And the angel said to, me, to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found grace um, and loving kindness with God. And listen, you will become pregnant. Hey! And that would be the most shocking thing a lady could hear, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. An angel standing, standing in front of you and he mm -hmm. says you will get pregnant mm -hmm. when you're not married. Um, and you will give birth to a son and you shall call his name Jesus. The angel knew whether it was going to be a boy or a girl and he knew who the, he said what the name was going to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, it had to be male because God is a male figure. And he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and God will give to him the throne of the forefathers of, of his forefather David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob throughout ages, and of his reign there shall be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have had no intimacy with a man, or as a, hus as a husband? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you like a shining cloud, and that holy, pure thing, sinless thing, which, you sh which shall be born of you, will be called the Son of David. And listen, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is now the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing is ever impossible, and no word from God shall ever be without power or impossible of fulfillment. And she said, the B Lord. I want to go back to that verse there, 37, because there's two verses that I want to mention today that are immensely powerful in this um, appearance of the angel and what he had to say. He said these words, for with God, Nothing is ever impossible. Mm. So what are your impossibilities in this life? Mm. It may not be impossible. Now I like the next bit, it's even bigger. And if you, These are the two points in this birth. And one of them it applies to us, but it's not actually about the birth, it's about what God, what the angel said. He said, listen carefully. 
and no word from God shall be without power or be impossible of fulfillment. So what has God said to you? So what has God said to you? What has God said to you about you, your situation, whatever? What has God said to you, Paul? He says that no word from God will ever be without fulfillment. So what have you heard from God? And you've lost on the journey. What has he told you? And you've tended to neglect what he said, that, well, that must have been a blip in the ocean. This is an important verse, and it came from an angel. No man had this word in their mouth. The angel was sent from God and he said these words. No word from God is without fulfillment. I want to shock you this morning, in this Christmas service, that if God has said something to you, it will be fulfilled. If he hasn't said anything to you, read your Bible and see what it says. By his stripes you were healed. Is that a word? Yes. From God? Yes. The prophet Isaiah said that. Just about all his prophecies have been fulfilled and up until now. There's a few left down the road. It was amazing. He said this. I want to wrench our hearts to believe what God says is true. Because it says this angel, not angelic being, the, the angel Gabriel, angels don't get things wrong. Do they? If God if come from, he didn't get it wrong because he came and said, Mary, you'll get pregnant without being a man. Absolutely right, it happened. This being inside you is, a, is of the Son of God. Got it right. She got pregnant without having a man. Got it right. This word was perfectly true. And it says that no word from God is short of being fulfilled. I'll read it again so you get in your head. For with God, nothing is ever impossible. He actually repeated it around another way. And no word from God, see, he actually gives us a double whammy. And no word from God shall be without power or impossible of being fulfilled. God, I like this. This is an inspiring word. You should write this word in your heart. So that you never forget what God has said to mankind by an angel, top kind of an angel, Gabriel, it wasn't one of the, the the millions. It was one of the. What's his name? His name. Do you like that? This came with the birth. It was a kind of a side deal that we can enjoy. But because he was describing the birth, he incorporated that in there. Yes! All my promises are yes and amen. Do you ever say an amen to the promises of God? To the yeses of God? You know, Dean preached here two months, about a month or so ago, and he said, all God's promises are yes, unless God says no. But he said all his promises are yes to us. Isaiah prophesied this birth and so did Joel and a few other minor prophets. They all came to pass. But are you willing to give a big yes to the promises? Because he said, all, all my promises are yes, 
and amen is our part. We give the amen to the yes. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that powerful? Isn't that elevatory? Isn't that a, a push in the right direction? You know, sometimes God's got to get, get, literally give us a push in the right direction. Our minds can talk us out of things. Do you know that? Yes. And God has to push us again and say, come on, you're into faith. I said it. So that was it. That was the, that was the, um, the story to Mary. She's not pregnant just at this moment, but he's told us what's going to happen. So that, the number one verse is what? No word from God is without fulfillment. No word. You like that? Yeah. I sowed this in your head, in my head, for 2022-2023. Right, so, I'll go to the other, other version. I, I love when the aim... So I'm, I'm, I'm hanging on that word. I'm, I've just rewatered it. I've slightly forgotten about it. I'm glad God has given me a push to, to emphasise that word. So the other word that I like is it'll come up on the other side. So the, so the, um, uh, what do you call them? Shepherds. Mm -hmm. There's shepherds out there. They're out there. And looking after their flocks. Not in the Southland kind of a way. But I kind of think that they just camped out with them to keep the wolves away from them, make sure mm -hmm. that no predators got at them. It says they're watching over their flocks by night. Sounds a bit like a late late night late night lambing beat on the farm joint. And this light shone around them. You know, I'd like that. But I, I think it would be scary if you didn't know it was going to happen. That lighting up the sky. They say so terribly frightened. I don't blame them in some way. But as Celia said, Do not be afraid. Behold, I bring you good news of the great joy which will come to all men. One today is a saviour be born. And this is a sign you'll find him wrapped in a manger. And then in first on chapter two of Luke verse thirteen, and suddenly there appeared with the angel an angel. I've always liked this. And the army of the troops of heaven. An army of the troops of heaven came. They also was with this angel that had stood by them. And it says in brackets in my Bible, a heavenly knighthood. I kind of like this. Praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. You know, that, that gives me encouragement. There's a heavenly troops out there they must be fighting troops. Why would you call them troops? Troops, in my mind, is something that does warfare. Why call it that? Why do you put them in brackets that are heavenly knighted? I believe these are the people that fight for us in the heavenly realm. The troops, I'm calling the troops of heaven down into my situation at the moment. They're fighting for me. I've got, I've got faith in the heavenly troops that will protect my mind Celia's mind, Dean's mind, Kim's mind, this heavenly troops are on our side. Mm -hmm. The knights of heaven. Have you thought of it before? Have you thought that there's angels and there's heavenly troops? Sounds like a difference <coughs> to me. I'm all for the heavenly troops in my day and age. I'm for them. I'm believing on them. You know, I've got an electric car. And I can drive around 
anywhere in the roads in New Zealand. But tell you what, the petrol vessels are absolutely useless to me. They're no use. Because they serve a different purpose for a different type of car. I have to find an electric pl plug-in place to plug mine in. Isn't it sad if we have all this heavenly assistance and we don't look out for it and, and, and make it work for us? I have to find an electric plug to make this car of mine carry on. I've actually only ever charged it, I'm charging place around New Zealand twice because I don't like fast charges. I think they're detrimental to your battery. But there is, there are places around the country where I can plug in. Are we plugged into the heavenly host? Mm -hmm. Come on. The knighthood. Are we believing? Mm -hmm. Are we struggling? That wasn't the point I'm really going to talk about, so I'm going to go back to the one that I was going to talk about, because this one, I think, is of huge importance to Christians. Let's go back to it. So they went and found him a manger, just in case I missed the point. They found him and gave him gifts, didn't they? But the angel said to them, another angel from heaven has said this, Do not be afraid. Before, before, behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which shall come to all the people. Great joy. Good news of the great joy. be sad if Christianity became a thing of not great joy? Wouldn't it be sad? It says he brings you good news of a great joy that will come to all people. So I suppose the challenge for me is have you lost your joy? Is it possible for a Christian to be a believer and lost their joy? Come on. This is a possibility. And if it's a happening, how sad is that when he said that this is going to be a great joy to all people? But when I read that verse, I, I, I know the verse off by heart. I mean, I can think about any time. In my, in my head, I can just be in Luke and see that verse. I thought God gave me a notion on that verse, but this is an important verse for you to preach on this morning. I'm sure somebody wrote a book somewhere called Little Joy Killers. I don't know whether it's a Christian book or not. But how is your joy this morning? But that's not the point. How is your joy tomorrow? How is your joy in six months' time? You know, I, I, I realized this morning when I was here that the joy of God was here in this room. That's what it's like. But, we're here for a couple of hours, great. I'd like to stay here and just be immersed in this room until Jesus comes back, probably. But, it's, this is not the thing. It is. A bit of the thing, but it's not the thing, is are we carrying this great joy every day? Mm -hmm. And there are things that come against us that try to steal our joy. Mm -hmm. But hey, I, I mean, for me, <coughs> I tend to see maybe life as layers of, um, there are experiential layers, but layers of, possibly I should say, harsh things that happen, good things, layers of this, layers of that, you know. But really, <coughs> to be honest, 
I believe above all those layers, there should be the layer of Jesus Christ's joy, which actually is a bigger layer and a more powerful layer than the things that we have to experience. And that we could actually live in this upper layer in, in spite of being immersed in <coughs> other, these other layers, that our life is really up here on the higher layer, layer. So that no matter what is happening experientially down on the ground, this one is more powerful and it's more penetrating and it's got more um, influence on our life and our mental capacity and our physical capacity than any other layer of what we're experiencing. So what layer are you living in? What layer? I, I mean, I'm trying to explain this in a kind of a, a way that maybe a human being and I can sort of put it out as a picture. Do you know what I'm trying to say there? So, how can we stay in that layer of joy in spite of crappy stuff happening? The only way I can believe we can is that our faith must be attuned in such a way that we're always, our default is, do you know what a default is? Mm. It's when, you, when everything else is given way to something, and computers, the default that goes to this stuff. stuff. The, the default is that uh, if your dog gets lost all over the town, its default is knows its way home, right? That's a default, isn't it? Mm. I've been trying to explain this stuff. But that our default would be in the layer of joy. Does this make sense? Mm. Now I'm talking about this in Christmas, just before Christmas 2022. Let's say by June 2023, we need to know this stuff and, and operate in it. Could we lose the uh, memory of knowing that there's a dimension of joy in spite of. Come on. So Jesus said that the joy that is in me may be in you. So that means what thing? What does that mean? It means that it's an own fact that the joy of Jesus is in us if we have Jesus. So you can't separate Jesus from joy, because he is joy. Mm. It's in him, right? Mm. You can't separate that fact. So if that's the fact, and I know I've got Jesus, then I've got joy. But how far down there have I, has it been suppressed? Come on. How far down has it been pushed? So I believe it's like this, that, by faith, I have joy inside me, in spite of being a screaming, crying mess. Is that right? Because he's in there. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Therefore, he's in there. So if he's in there, and the joy of Jesus, he said, the joy is in me, it'd be in you. So it's in there. So my, my only way of maybe getting this back, and it's not actually to go and drink three bottles of wine that doesn't actually it, it's a temporary measure mm -hmm. and it's expensive and it's very bad on your body probably that much but the only way for me to, to have this is that I in faith confess I have the joy mm -hmm. you know we used to sing a song I've got the joy inside of me Where? Yeah. yeah so but if that joy is not the conscious in your consciousness, what good is it if you're being ruled by, if you've been taken over by dep depression or depressing thoughts or what the situation's like? You know, I believe the only way to stay strong in 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 the event of circumstances is to live with that consciousness of that joy. Mm. So, here's the birth of Jesus. Comes along, the angel says, 
a great joy to all men. Introducing joy to us. Now I know it's all very well for me to say this and try and give a, an explanation of how to live in it. But I believe it's for each one of us. It's beneficial to live in the joy. Is that right? Yes. Come on. Yes. It is beneficial to live in the joy. You know, he's the guy who used to live down the road here, and he used to love feeding his depression, right? Because it seemed to, it seemed to make proper sense that if you're depressed, you just feed it more, because that's some strange way made sense to him, but it doesn't. It actually doesn't go anywhere. So, hey, for each one of us here, each one of us, as individuals, we must approach this in the way, as, the way that we, as individuals, can minister this to ourselves with the help of Jesus. So, I don't know whether any of this makes sense to you, but the thing was that Jesus did get born, and they found him in a manger. And, and we have this foundation to have joy. Jesus said that the joy that is in me may be in you. What do you think he was like when you hear him say that the joy that is in me may be in you? What amazing... I mean, you meet him, he's not going to be sour-faced, he's not going to be... Um, he, I think joy drives us... In, Hey, joy is something, I, I, I tell you something about joy, joy liberates your tongue. You say things in for God that you don't even need to say, and don't even know you're going to say, and you don't say them in a religious kind of a way, and they have an effect. Amen. So, the good thing is, the birth work, the angels are telling the truth, the word of God doesn't return void, hallelujah, we've got that promise. We've got the promise that the joy that is in him is in us. And the good thing, the next thing is, he said, I will never leave you. Mm -hmm. So you've never, you never not got the joy. Mm -hmm. The only thing we need, you going to say something, Eric? Yeah, just remind that in Nehemiah, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah, yeah, there's oh, a, I knew there's a verse yeah, that yeah, the joy of the Lord is my strength, the joy, the gladness of God. My so, strength or my defense or my stronghold. So, so if that's the case, and we want to be strong, what do we do? Stay in the ministration of the joy. Yes. Yes. And we're strong. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is a challenging kind of a message, but I think it's got a lot of... The, the fruit from this, the fruit from... Knowing this and administering it and allowing it and walking in it is amazing. I know what's, I mean, that's sort of, you know, where you are the light of the world, he said. The city does sit on a hill, it cannot be hid. That's what he said about us. He said, We are the light of the world. We've got joy, we've got hope, we've got faith, we've got eternal life, we've got healing, we've got righteousness, uh, we've got strength, we've got... Sorry, Lord, I've run out of... Yeah, well, let's do it. Come on.